A reader writes in, it feels like there is no point to even attempt to date since I am overweight. I also live in a major coastal city where there are far more women than men, so men have a lot of choices. Other than indicating that overweight people have better success dating in person than online, you seem to steer away from this topic. So my question is, how would you recommend that women who are overweight approach dating? Or do you only work with women who are thin? Ha! Huh. Well, that's a challenging um, and emotionally fraught question. And this is why I chose to deal with it on the podcast uh, to the point that I only work with thin women. Please go to evanmarquettes.com and click on Love Stories tab at the top of the page and you'll see plenty of women who uh, got married from my program who are not thin. So clearly I don't only work with thin women. And it would also not be a very good business model to work with only thin women because there's plenty of women who need love out there who are not thin. But to the point of the question, uh, I want to acknowledge that the author of that question is expressing a belief that it's a sincere belief that attempting to date is as an overweight woman is a challenge that to her may not be worth it. And this is a sincere feeling based on her life experience. And I'm certainly not going to take her life experience or yours away. It is harder, indeed, much harder to date if you're overweight. It would be disingenuous to express otherwise. The question, and again, very specifically, the language of the question is whether it's impossible. And the answer, of course, is no, it's not impossible to date as an overweight woman, more than it's impossible to date as a man who's shorter or a man who doesn't make money. It's just more challenging. So the woman who wrote this question, who shall remain, remain nameless, is expressing what we call a limiting belief one that's partially true, but not totally true. Other examples of limiting beliefs are, there are no good guys left. All men just want one thing. No guys want to commit. My city's horrible for dating. It's impossible to date at my age. These are the stories that we hear. Partially true, but not totally true. And so the way we shoot down limiting beliefs is with counterexamples and render those limiting beliefs well, limited. So how do I know there are good guys left? Because I know good guys. That's how I know there are good guys left. I know some, so clearly it can't be there are no good guys left. How do I know that men want more than sex? Well, I'm a man. I wanted more than sex. I could enjoy sex, but also know that I wanted far more out of life than random partners. So since I'm a man, I'm pre-existing example of that. How do I know that men want to commit? Well, there's 50 million married men in America. They didn't all do so at gunpoint. <laughs> so clearly men want to commit as well. How do I know that men in your city find love? Well, check out your local paper. There are weddings in every city in the world every single weekend. So there's always examples to contradict this narrative that everything is screwed and that there's it's impossible and there's no chances whatsoever. How do I know that it's possible at your age, whoever's watching this? Well, because I've got clients who are older than you who are having success and love you right now. All right, unless you're older than 76 or whatever, who's my oldest client. So unless you're older than my 76 year old client, I have evidence that you could date at any age. So if you're starting to despair at 45, um, well, I hate to tell you, it's not that simple and it's, there's no time to give up. So to go back to the original question, right? The I'm overweight, so it's impossible trope, the story that's being told, we need to acknowledge two truths. Number one, men in general prefer thinner, fitter women. And number two, the average size of a woman in the United States is a size 16. They're both true. Men may prefer this, but if the average woman is a size 16 and plenty of men are falling in love with people who are, who are normal in the big bell curve of normal, then clearly plenty of men are meeting women who are overweight. So look around you. Most people, even, even in coastal cities, most people are not built like fit models. And yet somehow, after all this time, 
Despite the fact that not everybody looks like a model, especially as we get older, 80% of people still get married, including a higher percentage of college graduates get married. Off the top of my head, I've had two clients in the past year who are wildly successful here in Love You. Both would probably be clinically termed obese, probably you know, both weigh over 200 pounds. I don't know, I'm not gonna ask, right? Both had no success in dating before joining me. One was around 40, one was around 60. But what these women lacked in bikini bodies, they made up for with kindness, confidence, inner beauty, self-awareness, and the ability to make men feel great. One of these women, the 60 year old, is now married. The other one has an amazing boyfriend and both met their guys on big mainstream dating sites, even though it's harder, despite the fact that everywhere you look, there's someone else who's younger or thinner. This happens multiple times on my watch. I could presume it happens off my watch. I'm presuming there's plenty of people who are average to larger than average who are finding love even without love you. So I'm not trying to make you the original poster or anybody else who's overweight and struggles with this. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you're heavy and if you are pessimistic, that's normal. What I am pointing out is that you may not be able to control your body type, but you can control how you show up in the world, whether you come from a place of joy and confidence, whether you operate from abundance rather than fear and scarcity, whether you persevere or whether you quit, whether you see the world through a glass half empty or a glass half full lens. The fact is you don't need every guy in your snooty coastal city town to dig you. You need one guy, one. That's how many people we met, one. Do you think there's one guy in your town who would love to have someone love him unconditionally? and would be willing to offer the same thing in return? I believe that. I just witnessed, sadly, the end of a, a, a very beautiful uh, love affair. My wife's cousin um, has multiple sclerosis. She's been wheelchair bound. And she had a 10 year relationship with a guy who took care of her and fed her. And she really, she, she can't do anything. And sadly, he just passed away of a heart attack. But this is a beautiful relationship that lasted for 10 years when this woman was certainly very challenging to date. So anytime someone says it's impossible, I have way too many stories of examples where it is po possible. And as a coach who's been doing this for 20 years, I have examples of clients who are in wheelchairs, right? women who are blind, women with histories of emotional and sexual abuse, women in their 70s, women who, who live in remote rural areas, people with big challenges who found love through my coaching. So it's being overweight challenging. Yeah, but it's no more challenging than any of what I just mentioned. So I throw it back to you. Instead of staying in your feelings and despairing about the very real challenges that you face, how about you face those challenges head on and get yourself a roadmap to get the love that you deserve because there is a straighter path and it doesn't begin with there's no chance for me, right? If you believe there's no chance, if you didn't believe there'd be a chance of being a lawyer, you'd never go to law school. Right? If you don't believe that you're ever going to find love, there's no incentive to actually invest in your love life. But if you do believe that what I'm telling you is true, and it is because so no, no point in me telling you lies um, uh, in this job that, 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 are, that are would you know, not be verifiable. Everything I tell you here is true. So if I could help other people do it, why couldn't I help you? So please, um, if you find this compelling, if you're stuck and are tired of being negative and thinking that it's impossible for you because you don't fit the part of what you think men are looking for, um, that doesn't speak for all men and all you need is one guy to change everything. So focus on what your limiting belief is. Let's try to shoot it down with counter examples and then fill out an application to love you and I'll take care of you. I'll do the rest. Okay. Thanks. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Love You podcast for more episodes like this on YouTube. 
click on the subscribe button, ring the bell and choose all to get notified when new content comes out. And if you want a man who makes you feel safe, heard and understood, go to www.evanmarkkatz.com. Click on the button to watch my free video about how you could fix your broken man picker. When you're done, apply to Love You to join other smart women in a coaching community where you could finally get the love that you deserve. I'll see you there. Take care.